Today's text is going to be taken, at least at first, from Matthew chapter 8, 21 to 22. Matthew 8, 21 to 22. All right. Today we're going to talk about, I should say tonight. Tonight we're talking about God of the living. All right. There's all kinds of versions of God, but we serve the God of the living. We are the children of the God of the living. If you want life, then it is found through Jesus Christ. If you have Jesus Christ, and you have that life, and you are the people of the God of the living. We're going to turn to Scripture. It says, Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let him not let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. I don't have to read much more before you start scratching your head, right? Man, that's pretty cruel. Can't bury my dad. What's up with that, Jesus? All right. But see, he, when Jesus was answering this man, it wasn't to deny him a son's duty to bury his father. All right. You can bury your father. In fact, this is not a command not to. So if you, if you still if that ever comes to your task, then be sure to do that. Don't be quoting this to get out of your obligation to take care of your family. All right. right. So <laughs> you can bury your father, but see, he he's calling attention to something of a deeper matter, and he is using that was something he's very good at. He, he says something and doesn't necessarily have to do with what he's saying, but when you hear, you just can't help but rethink what it what. Did you just say that? <laughs> and it sticks with you. Because see, Jesus could have just spelled it out for him. You know, you should follow me and you should put, you know, God first and you should put your house in order and, you know, God comes first in your life and honor God and follow me. And it, it probably, his eyes would have probably glazed over, right? And he would just start nodding and then he'll forget maybe half of it later. But he said, you know, Jesus took this opportunity and this young disciple was like, I want to follow you, but first I'm going to bury my father. So Jesus then chimes in, uh, let the dead bury their own dead. <laughs> I bet you that disciple never forgot that. He never forgot. Would you forget something like that? That's why Jesus talks this way sometimes. All right? And He does it to make a very specific point, to make it stick to your ribs that you can't forget because it's meant to do something in you. Amen. You're to leave the things of the world to those who are dead to God. This is what He's saying. Amen. Leave the things of the world to those who are dead to God. Let the dead bury the dead. The things of the world are dead. They bring death. They have nothing but death and no life. And the only people who have any business messing with it is those who are already dead. Amen. Perhaps Jesus knew this man's heart. He was trying to find a way out of something. Because if you look at Luke's account, Jesus tells him he was called to preach. And he's like, well... Oh, I know. I gotta bury my dad first. <laughs> and maybe, maybe Jesus knew in his heart that you know that was a distancing, distancing measure, an excuse to step out of something God has called him to do, and to step in to do it. And Jesus tells him, "Look, let the dead bury their own dead." That was then, but now this is now. See, these words can stick to all of us here right now. Jesus could tell you that the dead bear their own dead. And it would stick. And first I think it sticks in our nation as a church to, to even include this church. 
There are things that we're still stuck to and we won't let die. There are some things that we won't let go of and it's almost as if it keeps us in place where Jesus, we want to follow you, but first let us bury this and this and this and this. And we think about times of before and the great movements of God, and they were great, weren't they? Amen. But what about now? Is God not great now? Can God not move now? We have to let the dead bury their own dead. We need to look at the life that we have now. Amen. What God has given us right now. We can worry about all we... There's a loss of influence. And all the laws are crazy. And people are crazy. And no one wants to go to church and hear the words of God. And that's partly true. But bury it. Let the dead take care of it. You are people of the living God. Amen. Yes. We are not meant to live in a graveyard. We are meant to be at the foot of the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. Where there was no more death. Amen. Where He rose defeating death. We have no business staying in the graveyard. No more. Amen. That's because God is the God of the living. I go into Matthew further on in Matthew chapter 22. He says here in verse 32, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Amen. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Whatever is undead, um, no, whatever is dead, Whatever is dead is holding you back from following Christ. You just need to let the rest of the dead take care of it. And you just need to follow the living God. Amen. You can do this in reverse. If you're dead, then God is not your God. Is that not true? Amen. He's not the God of the dead. Did not Jesus just say this? If, if you're dead, if you're amongst the dead, then God is not your God. He's the God of the living. The right. God of the living. And living needs to be understood in proper context. See, you can have just basic biological life, but it might be a life of significance. Right. Just existing. That's technically life, but it's like living death. Of no account, no accord, no significance. It's like some now living like zombies. Living yet having no real life. But the newest term for them is what? The undead. They're not dead, but they're not really alive. They're somewhere in between. So you're kind of dead, but you're just existing. But they're dead as far as I'm concerned. That's not living. It's mindlessness. Driven by outside forces and instincts and pain and nothing more. Amen. There's no life there. That's right. But God is the God of the living. If your faith is like that of a zombie and it just exists, maybe, and nothing more, and it's, you're just living, but it's not really living, it might not be there. God is the God of the living. Not the God of the dead. He says to let the dead bury the dead. Let those things go. That's right. Because I am the God of the living. You can live by simply just not dying. But it's not really living. We need to redress that idea in the church. We need to realize Despite what looks like the enemy has accomplished, All right. it's of no accord. Because they're dead. They're amongst the dead, and the dead's going to bury them. But we are the children of the living God. 
He is the God of the living, which means we must then have life and be living. Otherwise, He is not really our God. Amen. We must have life and life abundant. Abundant life. See, all creation, we are told by the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, all creation is aching and moaning and groaning, waiting for that time when creation is restored and made new again. Every, everything's aching, just waiting, this anticipation, just, just constant groaning, waiting for that time. Now, now see, creation has to do that, and it has nothing else to wait for. Right? You have inanimate objects sitting there. You have non-sentient beings just waiting. They can't respond with faith to Jesus Christ. They can't actually exercise a, a God-given, spirit-filled life. Trees just sit there. They grow in place. If they move, the wind made them move. That's it. If they go up, it's because the sun gave them a little light. They had some nourishment and they go up. And that's it. The rocks just sit there. The scripture says the rocks will cry out if you don't, but that's conditional. If you won't, then the rocks will. But they're not designed to be crying out. You are. The rocks just sit there. The trees just sit there. The dirt just sits there. And we're dirt except by the life breath of God. We're not meant to sit there just like dirt. Or to be like the rocks and the trees Creation has an excuse to just sit there and moan and groan and just sit and wait because that's all it's designed to do. But you are made in the image of God. You carry His breath in your lungs. You were made to good purpose, to works presented before you even came into existence here. To carry out. For you to do See, we can, we can, we are also waiting in anticipation. But see, we are waiting in anticipation because of something yet to be done. But we have the first fruits of the harvest to come. We have the investment of the Holy Spirit in our life. Paul calls it the, the first fruits of, of the creation. We're waiting for that resurrection and we have that initial investment into us right now by the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit dwells in us. And that Holy Spirit is not meant to just dwell and sit there. It's meant to animate life into the body of the believer. Because He is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. If you feel like you're just dead, you might be. If you have faith in Christ, you need to remember you have the living Holy Spirit of God within you. And He is the God of the living. He is not the God of the dead. And He wants to see some life, abundant life, poured out of you. Amen. That's right. Jesus came that we may have life and have it abundantly. And that's, that's all aspects of life. All aspects of life. To have it abundantly. A great amount of life. And with that life we can do all things. And a favorite verse that we'd like to, to learn. I think most of the children even know this. Is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right? I think we've all heard it. We know it. We can probably recount it if asked to. It's a favorite verse. But I think sometimes much abused and taken out of context. All right? It's not a verse saying you can do what you want and God will make it happen. It's not a verse that says if you just dream it up, it will just come to pass because you can do it. Because you just, I, this is what I want to do. Jesus said I can do it. So it's going to happen. That's, that's not really what it is. Because see, Paul is talking about it 
based upon the things he's been through, both good and bad. Good and bad. And he was able to go through them because he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. This includes good and bad. And if you are living, you will have them abundantly. If you are living abundant life, you will have abundant good. You will have abundant bad. Because that's what living is. But you have an abundance. A fulfillment of living. Because see, sometimes it's okay to come in, into the presence of God's people and be mournful and to be sorrowful and to not feel all there. It is. Uh, to, to, to force yourself to look a certain way. To, to force happiness, that's not living. That's like you're dying inside. Isn't it? When you can't let that show, that's like it's death. But we are, we are people of the living God. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That means we can weep and mourn with others because we're asked to do it. As the word says, if somebody's happy and joyful, be happy with them. But it also says if they're mourning and they're weeping, to do that with them too. And we can do it because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Life is meant to be lived to its fullest potential. Abundantly. You'll have good and bad. And maybe you're wrestling with that right now and you're thinking, well, wait a minute. So God wants me to have an abundance of bad things? No. It's for your good. Everything's for your good. And sometimes it's for the good of others. And I'll give you the biggest example of all. See, Jesus lived an abundant life. He lived life abundantly. And he knew what it was to be the people of the living God. He was able to do all three things because he was Christ. Because Jesus felt real pain. When he was betrayed by Judas, even though he knew it was coming, that betrayal hurt him. When he said to Peter, you're going to deny me. And Peter's like, oh, no, I'm not. And then it happens. Even though he knew it was coming, it hurt him. When he was arrested and hit at a fake trial to be accused of something he ain't never done, it hurt him. When he was flogged to appease the crowd, it hurt him. When he was drug out in front of an entire garrison of Roman soldiers, their information there just to mock and laugh at him, it hurt him. When they drug him to the cross and nailed it to him, or him to it, and they lifted him up, it hurt. It was painful. And you know what? That was life abundant. That was an abundance of life. An abundance of life that He willingly lived that you may have a born in life. Amen. And because of that, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. All things. To live all things. We can forgive enemies and walk that extra mile. Why? Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And maybe you didn't have uh, a good example of a father or a husband or a mother or a wife for you to emulate and become. But you know what? You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Amen. And you can say, well, you know what? Jesus knew it was coming so maybe it didn't hurt that bad. But I, you know what? In, in hindsight, I don't think so because I remember as a boy, my grandma telling me, boy, go out to the woods and fetch me a switch. Because you know what that led to, right? When I brought the switch back, I know what she's going to do with it. It was to tan my eye. It was to beat an example into me. I knew it was coming. The entire time. 
And I'm trying to waste time in the woods looking for the switch. And then there's the dilemma of do I pick the, the, the horrible one? Because it, it'll hurt more, but if I pick this tiny little twig, she'll break it on me and I'll have to fetch another anyway. And this could just, you know, you know so you, there's a lot of psychological pressure. And you know it's coming. So by the, <laughs> when I got the whooping, it didn't make it easier knowing it was coming. When Jesus got what He had coming for your sake, He knew it was coming, but He didn't make it any better. He felt it. And then some. And He lived that life abundantly to give us abundant life. Amen. And He gives us a, a hope, not a wish. Because I think a lot of us are stuck on wish and not hope. We wish for things. When you wish for stuff, like when you, when you throw a penny into the well to make a wish, or you, you blow out the candles, make a wish for your birthday, or a, a shooting star flies over and you're like, oh, I got quick, I got to make a wish. Do you really believe that's going to come true? I mean, really? No. Now, if it does, it's like, well, cool, yeah, wish came true. But you really don't expect it to. But see, that's not what hope is. If your hope is in Jesus Christ, it's not just a wish. It is something that you can hold on to and know it is there and know it is true and live it abundantly because you belong to the God of the living, not to the dead. Move now to John chapter 5. We'll read verses 24 and 25. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death into life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Amen. Amen. You need to hear and believe and move into life. Because that's how it works. You hear the words of the gospel. You believe and you own it and you enter into life. Which means you were once dead. Maybe you're still dead. But you hear the words of life. And that's how you get life. And he says the hour is now. Now. That was now in his day. That means it's especially now. 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 The dead. Meaning those who are dead in their sins and their trespasses. The dead will hear the words of life from Jesus. And they will hear them and live. Amen. Yes. The dead will hear and they will live. And Jesus can say all that because He tells us that, you know, let the dead bury their own dead. He says, I am the God of the living, not the God of the dead. I have come to give you life abundantly. And you can live an abundant life because you have an abundant God. If you have an abundant God, it is nothing for you to live an abundant life. If you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you have that Holy Spirit in you, making you a new work, giving you a new hope, you can live an abundant life because of who God is. An abundant God. The same Spirit. Think about this. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That is the same Spirit that dwells in you. Amen. You a believer of Jesus Christ, that same Spirit who raised Christ from the dead is the same Spirit that dwells in you. It's the same Spirit that lifts you up from your death. The power of resurrection. And it says live. Live abundantly. Because I am not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And you need to let the dead bury the dead. Yes. The Spirit can't just sit in there, though. No. Amen. Because again, 
Rocks can sit there. And, and it can go, well, God, I can't help it. I'm a rock. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're a rock. You'll, I'll have you on standby to cry out, though, in case the humans don't do it. Right? But see, you have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That's not supposed to just sit there for you to hold on to and bury it in the ground and to keep it and act like it ain't there and to walk around like you're still dead. I'm not talking about you don't feel bad. I'm not talking about you don't have hard times. I'm not talking about you're crying and weeping and mourning because that's a part of life. But I'm talking about where you're just living simply because you ain't dead yet. Because you're meant to have abundant life. Life! With the Holy Spirit indwelling you. Amen. Now with that Spirit, you have that deposit. It's meant to spill out of you. It's meant to pour out. And when we come together as a church, when all of that same, we all have that Spirit in us, the same Spirit. Now when it comes together in corporate power, and it begins to pour out together. That's when things really start to come alive. Amen. That's when you're like, Woo! Church is alive! And God is there! Amen. That's always been the case though. Yeah. He's alive right now because He's a God of living. And if you are God's people, you are living. Amen. You should be living. Amen. And in that life, that Spirit, it can do what it's supposed to do in that abundant life. And make things come to pass. Amen. Amen. People can be healed of their diseases. Amen. People can be saved who are hard-headed beyond all hardness. Amen. There are people who just, you feel so defeated, but you can stand up and say, I have victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Come on. Why? Because of that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He's in you. Amen. In you. But the, the, the devil... Has tried to just make us forget that. Right. I think, and I, I honestly believe in some ways, he succeeded. Right. He succeeded. He succeeded with me. Right. It's, so, it's so easy to just forget it, it, because I, I rest on my own ability sometimes, or I, I rest right. on my own thinking. My own experiences, or, or I have some fears, or, you know, you know I've been hurt. Right. And and you know it, it <laughs> it's hard to wrestle with that. Yes. And but if if that's all I dwell on, and I forget that I have the indwelling Holy Spirit of God in me, it, it's like I'm just I'm bearing it. It's like I I have left the ranks of the living and I walk into the graveyard, hoping something gets buried that I may then get up and go follow Christ. <laughs> I'm waiting for something to be buried before I'll get up and go follow Christ. I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. There's a whole bunch of us where we've been letting the dead things be drugged on and on. on. Oh, what is that dead thing on me? And it's like somebody buried this thing. <laughs> Jesus, wait, Jesus, I got I to take this off and do something about it. But who knows how long that takes. And you get that off and something else when the lights on, right? Because right? the de devil knows when he can when he can disorient you like that. That's right. And it works one time and you kick it off, he's gonna throw another. And he's gonna throw another. Because it worked. Isn't that what you do? Something works, you stick with it. If it works, he sticks with it. That's right. But see, we need to let the dead bury the dead. All right. The things of the dead need to bury the dead, take care of it. But if you don't know Christ, then you are dead. I mean, yeah, you're drawing life. You're living. But you're dead. You're dead in your sins. You're dead in your trespasses. To give you another illustration of how this works. See, if, if you've heard people say, you're dead to me. It's like you don't exist no more. It's as if you were, you're living, you're walking around, but you know what, to me, you're dead. I don't know you. I don't want to know you. Whatever relation we once had, it is severed. It is done. See, if you are in your sins, that's how you are before God. You're dead to Him. More appropriately, He's dead to you. 
More appropriately, he's dead to you because he's waiting there at any moment for anyone to cry out to God and say, have mercy on me. Amen. And he will swoop you up into life because that's what he desires. Amen. But you're still in a state of being dead towards him because he's dead to you. We need to remember as the body of Christ that we are alive. Amen. Amen. We have life because we follow the giver of life. We have abundant life because we have an abundant God. We are not dead and we need to let the dead bury the dead. Whatever whatever's in your life is dead. And you're and it's, and you and I know when I said that you're thinking that flash in your head. And you're either going, yeah, that's right. Or you've immediately made that excuse as to why that's not really that thing. That's what I'm talking about. Is that holding you down? And you're like, well, until I bury that, I can't follow Christ. That's what Jesus means when he says, let the dead bury the dead. Let the dead bury the dead. You have no business messing with death. You are not priest of the dead God. You are priest of the living God. God of life. Life abundant. And we can walk in victory. Even when all hell, I guess I could say that, right? When all hell breaks loose all around us in the world, right? Because of the prince of the air. When all hell breaks loose around us, we can still walk in victory. We can still walk in life. We can still walk in forgiveness. We can still walk in how? Abundant life. Yes. Being children of the living God. All right. That surpasses all death. Because love covers a multitude of sins. That's right. Right? And you have the love of God. Right? This is not an exhortation to just, well, I better do stuff to prove I'm following Christ because then you'll miss it. You'll be back in the graveyard pretty soon. But we need to be aware. Look, there are dead things holding each of us back. There are dead things that we're thinking, well, until I contend with it, I can't follow Jesus. And it's putting you on stop. It's putting you on hold. Uh, The train's already moved. Everything's already going on ahead and you're like, well, I can't go yet. I can't go yet. I'm still waiting. I got to bury this thing. I don't know when I'm going to bury it, but I got to bury this thing. We have to contend with that. Because once we let the dead bury the dead, what's holding you back? From walking with the Prince of Peace, with the Emmanuel, the God of the living. Nothing holds us back. And when we walk like that in power, in might, because of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Otherwise, that's just a wish. It's not a hope. We have a hope to cling to, and that is in Jesus Christ. Now, with your permission, Pastor, I would like to have an altar call. Please stand with me. We need to remember who we are as the people of God. Saints of God, we need to remember we are indeed that saints of God. We are not beaten, beaten stepchildren. We're not neglected orphans. We're not just things that are contended with and we're not just thrown a bone because we're adults. You are adopted heirs of the God Most High. The God of the living. He is not the God of the dead. He is the God of the living. If you have that belief in Christ and you've had your baptism and you've got that Holy Spirit in you and you are a Christian, you have that Holy Spirit in you right now. You might not have felt it, but it's there. Alright? It's there. Now, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it?
It's not just for you to carry around. It's meant to live abundantly. We live abundant Christian lives because of the Holy Spirit in us. It's the Holy Spirit that makes you bold when you're not bold. It's the Holy Spirit that makes you honest when you don't want to be honest. It's the Holy Spirit that drives you onward when the pain makes you say, I want to go back into the graveyard. Amen. The Holy Spirit. So I, I feel to, to open the altars. Hey, mainly, if, if you know you have those dead things in your life, just come in and give them to God. Whatever it is, it's like you, you use it as an excuse of I would follow you, Jesus, but that very thing, you need to let it be buried by the dead. Amen. You just need to walk away from it and let the dead continue with it because you are a follower of a God of life. Amen. Amen. So if, if you have those things to give up, those things to pray for and just unleash, then I want you to come up and just start praying. We'll pray with one another. And, and when I get my turn, I'm going to be there too, just so you know. I know I have these things to get rid of. Right? So if you have those things in you, come and get rid of them. If, if there's just things that are contending with you, you'll maybe have those things, but things are contending with you, and you you felt defeated, and you're like, God, I'm trying to live this life for you, but it's like I'm going nowhere. I, you have abundant life, and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You have victory, and you have hope. Not a wish, hope. You have a hope, and that's a hope. You need to re-grab on again and seek the face of the living God. Amen. And then come forward and seek that. And if any other thing, because the Spirit can work this way sometimes. You know, I could preach this, but in your head there's something like, oh God, you know, and it's been revealed to you. That's right. And you just need to give it in prayer to God. Then that's fine. Mm -hmm. It only has to be related to this. Mm -hmm. But if God, if the Spirit moves you, be obedient to the Spirit that you may walk in life. So if you, whatever fits you, uh, and, and even if you just want to pray with others or something for you, go ahead, come forward now. Oh, come forward and receive prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.